first for the Nets. Oh, 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 Jalen Smith. That is a play to oh, oh, What a tackle by Jalen Smith. Welcome back to the Frisco Report, guys. Thank you for joining me. I'm Mike uh, from Dallas Cowboy Football News. You know I can't do this for myself. I got Joe from Cowboys Blog. What's going on, Joe? How's your week been? It's going great, man. It's going great. I love it. You know, we're talking all this Cowboys free agency and draft talk. It's a, it's never a, a dull moment in Cowboys Nation, you know? It's never a dull moment. You know, the Super Bowl was a couple of weeks ago. And we're already cow, people just can't keep the Cowboys name out of their mouth. And that's, and that's why we're here. Right. We got, we got to talk about the talks about, you know what I mean? Exactly. But, uh, let's roll <laughs> into this. And we're we're going to, I know it, it, it seems like every show, but we got to go back into Dak Prescott. And, uh, my question, Joe, is he, someone asked him, uh, Dak, are you worth 40 million? And Dak's response was, you tell me. So, let's respond to Dak. Is Dak worth forty million, Joe? <laughs> uh, that, that, I, I would. I, I don't know. It, this is just one of those. It's a hard question because the Cowboys have, you know, they've been kicking this can down the road, and it's time to pay the piper. And and the price projections. I remember when this whole thing started early. It was fifteen million, hmm. twenty million. 25 million was berserk for a bunch of fans. Couldn't believe it. Didn't want to, you know. And then now here we are talking about 35, you know, supposedly he turned down 33 million. So now what is the number? It's got to be between 35 and 40. So, no, I didn't I didn't mean to go long winded there. But, you know, it's that's kind of where we've arrived because the Cowboys are waiting this long to to make a decision by now you should know if your quarterback is your franchise quarterback you know i think you're right i I think you have to know and me as a fan i it's hard to speak on another man's money right yeah um you know he's been playing football his entire life basically um and uh me looking in if i was general manager Looking at Dak's performance, knowing that he had a top five offensive line his whole four years, knowing that he had a top three running back uh, in the National Football League, um, he won some, he lost some when Ezekiel Elliott was out. Um, then, then I look at that, and then Joe, I look at, okay, where have you improved? We know your footwork was off. Um, your footwork's gotten better. How's your throw in motion? His throwing motions got a little better. Okay, then, then we start looking at real real life times here. 0 and 5 and 1 possession games. Um, you know, people talk about his 14 uh, career comeback wins, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you you can give some to Dan Bailey, you can give some to Brett Maher, you can give some to Zeke. For example, Zeke beat the Steelers um, single handedly. Uh, you know, you had Des Bryant out. Over there, double covered. Zeke hit the hole, scored the touchdown. But Dak Prescott gets the game-winning co- comeback for that, right? Yeah. Um, so th- there's a lot of factors that can – I'm getting long-winded too. But there's a lot of factors in this. If I'm general manager, my price range is somewhere along the lines of 31 to 34. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where it gets tricky, right? Because maybe Jerry Jones, the actual general manager, wants seven years. But Dak's like, wait a minute, we're going to get a whole new CBA here uh, within a year. I want four years, so in four years, I get I get my third contract, right? Mm-hmm. So then, th- I think that's the optical. I don't I don't think the guaranteed money is an issue. I I don't think, uh, however long the average is an issue. I think it's the contract link, Joe. What do you what do you, what do you think about the contract link, Dak? I, maybe Dak wants four years. Maybe the Cowboys are pitching six to seven years. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, well, I, I I did look at some of the, some of these recent contracts, and they're all in that five year range. That seems to be the sweet spot for these guys that got second contracts. Whether it was you know Russell Wilson or uh, you know uh, Kirk Cousins or some of these other guys, five five year deal. You know, unless, unless he's wanting to get out like early, like you said, like four years. But you know, that's uh. 
I don't know, man. I think you would, at minimum, five-year deal. But maybe the Cowboys are wanting to go longer to to minimize the cap. You know, we, we have to see. Spread it out. Yes, yeah. we have to see what their plan is. But that, that's a good question. Because, you know, t- Tony Romo took, what, a five-year deal? Then, you know, after year one, there was re- those restructures to free up salary cap space, et cetera. Um, you know, with four years, you really can't restructure those contracts because – and that last year, it's basically all guaranteed. Yeah. You know? So, I think that's where the Cowboys want to do that. Okay, we can keep Amar. We might be able to keep Byron uh, Byron Jones. But we got, we have to have a seven-year contract here so we can restructure this contract if necessary down the line. And maybe Dad's like, you ain't touching my money. I want my stuff every year on the year. So, that that's pretty tricky, man. That it's it's a it's a tricky situation, but my price range if I'm general manager is thirty one to thirty four. And then Michael Irvin, Joe, came out and said significant people didn't say in the Cowboys organization, uh, didn't say uh, they were involved with the Cowboys in any type of way. He just said significant people are talking about trading Dak Prescott and them going after. Tom Brady, what was your instant reaction on that? Yeah, when when you know th- when that news came out, I was kind of like, well, you know, Michael Irvin do- doesn't make stuff up, so and he he hasn't before, so you know, for me to hear it from him, I'm like, okay, well, he's not just gonna make this up, so there's gotta be something to this, uh, you know. But then, but then he's but then Irvin kind of backtracks a little bit and you know comes out and says that it wasn't with Cowboys officials, it was just with other people. Um, you know, I guess kind of spitballing ideas. So, you know, it's a, a little bit of pie on a lot of people's faces, you know, um, going kind of berserk on the rumor. Yeah, I know, Joe. Me and you were talking behind the scenes, and um, we weren't that amped up about it. We weren't that excited. But, yeah. if, but I'm a greedy Cowboys fan. It's time for us to win a Super Bowl. You know, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, it was 50 years for them. Um, and we're already knocking on the door of 26. So, you know, if Dak's your guy, you got to sign him. Um, and you, you got to make this stuff quick and go get Mike McCarthy, get this roster and get us a championship. Year one, probably not. Year two, it's expected. Year three, it's mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is the timeline that needs to be, you know, I mean, I mean, and then some people even argue that this, this year one has to be it. So <laughs> it's, uh, Mike McCarthy jumped into something here, you know, so hopefully he's got everything in place to, to get this thing going. I I have faith that he does, but yeah, man, this whole thing about Brady, it kind of, it kind of brings you back to whenever the, the Broncos were struggling, they're, you know, kind of winning here and there with Tebow and some of these other guys They finally said, forget it. Let's get, let's get Peyton Manning. And, uh, you know, he got it done. I'll be it. He wasn't, you know, 42 <laughs> years old or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of a fun idea. You know, it kind of makes you wonder, like, w- would that one player be it? You know, would we be able to win a Super Bowl kind of like the Broncos did with Manny? That's that's kind of what, you know, flashed through my head at first. Yes. Yeah. Me, me too. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stingy when it comes to, to my Cowboys and, and whatever they do to win us a championship, if Dak's on the boat or not, count me in because the Lombardi Trophy don't go to one player. It sits on a shelf, and it's history. But and, and yeah, it's history. Just like you know, like you mentioned, the Chiefs fifty years. We're we're coming up almost on thirty, so it's kind of scary because then we're growing old with the team, and I'm like, I was I was blessed enough to watch the Cowboys as a youth go through Jimmy Johnson in the Super Bowl. I saw that. I went through it. But my son, he's gone through all these great players, you know, like mm. Barber, Tony Romo, T.O., Terry Glenn. I mean, the list is on. And I'm Des Bryant, you know, Jason Witten. Exactly. So it's, I, uh, had the pleasure to, I, mean, yeah. I had the pleasure to meet your boy. And he he's, he's up there with you, man, when it comes to being passionate about the Cowboys and you know, I, I remember just being six years old when they won their last one. I remember bits and pieces of it, but it was just, okay, a football game's on. Let's rock and roll. I had my jerseys on and stuff, but I I want to get that emotional feel, Joe. Yeah. You know, your yeah. son deserves that too. I mean, he's 
just invested as you are. It is, man. It's it's uh, I I want them to <laughs> get another Super Bowl, man. At least it's over, do uh, by a long shot. Um, so let's talk about uh, a Cowboys veteran, um, Sean Lee, the general. Been, been with the team for what ten years now, eleven years. A um, couple of Pro Bowls under his belt. Really excelled in a in a three four defense. Led linebackers and in interceptions early in his career in his prime. Um, now it looks like he might be testing free agency. Um, I have heard reports that Cowboys do want him back, <clears throat> but Sean Lee's pushback is okay. What's my playing time? Um, because Sean Lee feels like he can play at a high level. He played all 16 games. He didn't start all 16, but he played all 16, and he played at a high level, and he feels that playing time plays a big factor in his next move in the National Football League. So what was your reaction to Sean Lee and Tess and free agency? I think that, uh, you know, he – I think he will. You know, I think he'll he'll look around, but at the end, you know, I think his preference will be the Cowboys, but I I, I just don't see the Cowboys giving them a long-term deal. You know, it's probably uh it'll probably be a year-to-year rental at this point. So but I understand his passion, you know, he can still play. He showed that he could play, but you know, you you do have to take into consideration the age of the player, the injury history and that kind of thing. So it's not like he's going to, like, it's not like there's going to be, like, suitors out there clamoring for Sean Lee. You know, they they know everything that we know about Sean Lee at this point of his career, you know. So, mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. I think the Cow- it would be in the Cowboys' interest, at least for, for death, because we really don't know about LVE. We, we don't. We're not going to know until the pads come on and if he's sitting and doing cord work or whatever. So, <laughs> we'll see, man. Absolutely. And you brought up a good point about the depth and where, you know, Leighton Vander Esch is at. And, you know, we, we talked about this early in our show when we started this show. And uh, it's it, it's it's scary because if you, you take out Leighton Vander Esch and let's say this prolongs into the season, J- Jalen Smith, Joe Thomas, the, these guys are right there. Um, you know, so Sean Lee will play a huge part on this defense and from what i saw it didn't look like hamstrings were an issue um you know early in his career concussions were a huge issue when he was playing mike linebacker but you know they moved him around and he he adjusted well i think the cowboys got to get uh, a one-year uh with a two-year option so a two-year deal with the one-year option there towards the back end sean lee can't be that expensive but like you said when he depth and Sean Lee can bring that. I mean, he's loyal to the star. He's the right kind of guy for the locker room. And uh, this is what you need on your football team is a guy like Sean Lee. Maybe I'm a homer because I grew up watching this guy. But, hey, I love me some Sean Lee. Yeah, yeah, and he still he still gets it done in, at a position that's paper thin right now. So it, it makes a lot of sense to bring him back, you know. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. But, uh Definitely something to monitor, you know, as far as what the Cowboys' plans may be in free agency and the draft. So we'll see. What, yeah. we'll see what happens there. Yeah, free agency, the draft is the telltale sign for the building block of the Dallas Cowboys in 2020. And then uh, we got to talk about this player. I can't let this one go, Joe. Des Bryant tweeting Stephen Jones tweeting the Dallas Cowboys, uh, texting Stephen Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me come back. Let me come back. What was your reaction when you heard the news that Dez is going straight to the source and Stephen Jones wanting to come back and play for the Cowboys? And do you want him to come back and play for the Cowboys? Yeah, I, um, when I when I first heard it, you know, and you know, we've all been seeing his his drills and everything, and he looks in shape. You know, they're saying that he's at his playing weight, so that's good. Um, but I feel kind of the same way as I do about our linebackers. You know, I we, I mean, there's a lot of question marks right now. Cooper, Cobb, these guys are, te- you know, technically they're free agents, right? So the only guy that you, you really have who's worth anything that's any good is Gallup. Noah Brown's no good. Uh, John Vay Johnson, you know, 
bumbled his opportunity. Um, and Cedric Wilson, th- th- these are just guys that can be upgraded, and I think the Cowboys are going to address it in, in some uh, fashion. Here's my take, and I'm probably going to get some hate comments, but I don't want Dez on this team. 31 years old, when the Saints signed him, he was in practice for one day, tore his Achilles. Um, and the reason why Dez kind of fell off in Dallas is the NFL changed. And Dez Bryant didn't adapt. Dez Bryant's not a route runner, Joe. Yeah. I'm not lying. No, that's, that's the right. proof's in the pudding. Yeah. He's not a route runner. Mm-hmm. He, I, I look at age. I look at Achilles issues. And I look at he's not a route runner. The NFL, you have to be able to run routes. That's why guys like Amari Cooper uh, is a high commodity because Amari Cooper can run the best routes. Michael Gallup is learning from Amari Cooper to learn the routes. And what scared me, Joe, is Des, Des Bryant tweeted, let me have the Jason Witten role. So what is the Jason Witten role? He played 70 snaps or 70% of the snaps. Mm-hmm. Des, I can't have you out there playing 70% of the snaps if you're not a true route runner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then what is Jason Witten's role? In the middle guy, move the chains guy, Des Bryant. If you're out there in the slot or if you're lined up close to the tight end, it's going to be obvious of what we're going to do. You know, if you're open, we're going to hit you, gang tackles. You know, when you get linebackers knowing and they get a running head start to hit you, at 31 years old, you might not get up. Now, I'm not wishing injury on Jets Bryant, but that's just that's just the truth. Like there's Cowboy fans get so attached to the name and what he did in his prime. But the NFL changed and Des not being a route runner caught up to him, Joe. Yeah, and 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 that's what it is, man. And for me, the only way I could feasibly, you know, logically have Des Bryant back on the team is if he's going to be a special teams guy, you know, is he going to return for you? He did it early in his career and actually excelled at it. But did he lose that gear when he blew out the Achilles? You, you don't know what his top speed is. You know, I'm yeah. sure he could play a uh, punt returner. Um, he could be like your, your last receiver on the team and, and, and give you, you know, a uh, special team, but he would have to do that. You know, he would have to be out there, as a gunner, probably, and you know, doing that on the, on the return game and and that kind of thing. So, does he want to put his body through that, or you know, there's there's a lot that that, that um, some people just aren't really talking about. You know, it's more than just being a receiver and, and this and that. It's like, how would you fit him on the team? You know, so yeah, I, I I don't see it happening at the end of the day. It's a, it's an interesting thing to kick around and kind of consider. You know, but. I think the Cowboys, they want to get younger and they want McCarthy to get his own guys. That's my thing. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You know, Mike McCarthy's going to bring in his own staff. Now, if this was Jason Garrett, I could see Des Bryant coming back, you know, just because that's the type of guy Jason Garrett is, you know. And I just don't see Des Bryant fitting. number Because let's say he comes in as a number four. And Amari Cooper says, hey, I need a breather. I'm going to be out our – Hey, my my ankle's still messed up. I need a, I, I need a breather. I need, I need to get out of here. Des, I don't can Des Bryant play cons- at a high level to what Amari Cooper can do? Because if he's number four, he's filling in for Des Bryant. And can Des Bryant run those route trees, or is it going to mess up the flow of the offense? And that's where I have issues with Des Bryant. Now he can go to another team and just blow the NFL out of out, out of the waters, and I could be wrong, but. The last taste in my mouth, that's what I'm going off of. You don't improve as you get older. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, you know. And I'm, I mean, we're some of the biggest Des fans ever, you know. But we're, we're, just, we're looking at this on the football side, the business side. And it's just, you know, I, I, I do want to see him play football. I just, I think it's got to be in a certain system, though, you know, where <clears throat> he'll, he'll get some more snaps because he won't get them with the Cowboys, you know. He, between Coop and Gallup, you know, they just won't be there. Yeah, they, they won't. And that, that's just, that's the cold hard truth, Joe. But that, that's all I got about Des Bryant. Do you have any other topics before we get into some other things, Joe? No, that's it. That's it. Those are the hot takes of the week so far. Yeah, that's all I got so far, too. Um, 
I don't know if this is true, and I guess I'll bring something up. Did you hear that Byron Jones unfollowed the Dallas Cowboys on Instagram, on the gram? Yeah, I saw that actually somewhere on Twitter. Um, I didn't click it, though. I didn't know if it was clickbait or not. And honestly, I hadn't seen anything else after that, so I'm not sure who was reporting it. So I hadn't seen it from, from anybody else, so it might just be clickbait. I don't know. I, I never I don't have Instagram I don't use Instagram so I, I couldn't confirm that either but pretty interesting if you did because Zeke accidentally and I put in that in quotations did the same thing um, after the OTAs if you remember that correctly mm-hmm. um, so that's pretty interesting but let's get into some mock drafts we're gonna do round one pick 17 and round two what is it pick 51. I believe it is 51. Yeah. Boom. So, I'll let you go first, Joe. In the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select. They select. Let's take a look at this right here and run the simulator. So, what we're going to do, guys, is I'm running the fan speak and a two-round mock draft. And just to see... You know who who we could get all right and as we go through this you know we'll, we'll talk about who's available and then we'll, we'll make a pick i'll make mine and, I'll, and then i'll let mike you, you can do yours all right so let's let's get this thing running here fan speak mock draft season is here baby all right let's, it is let's it draft is. all right here we go Let's see what what names are there and who we might consider. Joe Burrow, number one to the Bengals. Interesting. Chargers to Herbert. Henry Ruggs went to the Jets at 11. It's interesting. Ken Law went to the Colts at 13. And Caleb on Chase on is number 16 right before us. All right. So... Here we go, Mike. few interesting names. We are on the clock. Uh, Jerry Judy, wide receiver. He's on the board still. A.J. Epinesa. Wide receiver T. Higgins. Linebacker Patrick Queen. Jordan Love is still available if you want to do something crazy with the quarterback. Uh, Mecca Becton, uh, offensive tackle. He's available still. C.J. Henderson. Xavier McKinney. Christian Fulton. Grant Delpit, uh, just a, a lot of names are, are still available here. So, uh, is there is there a particular name that you want me to check here, Mike? Is who's available? Hey, make your pick, Joe. I got some. My simulator is pretty crazy right now. All right, so I'm uh, I'm looking at a defensive line. Ross Blaylock, okay. he's available. I'm not liking what's available here. Let's look at some edge players. Epinesa is available still. Um, mm. Marlon Davidson. So, but the rest of these guys, I think you can get them later. Let's look at cornerback. Mm-hmm. You're going to take that chance. It's only a two-round mock draft, Joe. All right, so what I'm going with, I'm going with C.J. Henderson. Oh, Cornerback. I'm, I'm kind of going under the... The scenario that we're not going to have Byron Jones. So, C.J. Okay. Henderson's available. Christian Fulton is there. I th- I just feel that Henderson does more with the ball. You know, Fulton did do good, but I almost feel that you're getting a Byron Jones kind of pure cover guy than an actual turnover guy. So, C.J. Henderson, I, I go with him at a number 17 pick. Nice. Nice. That was a good pick. That's a good pick now. I'm on the clock already, Joe. My simulator is pretty quick. Um, right, I'm going to tell you what, who's on the board. Are you ready? Yeah. The top five guys that I have, Justin Herbert, Oregon, Grant Delpit, LSU, uh, off at the tackle, Andrew Thomas, Georgia. I got uh, uh, Kay LaVon from LSU, edge rusher. Those are my top five guys right now, Joe. Mm-hmm. That I got. So I got I got Justin Herbert. That could be franchise tag by now. You know, do we do we trade him away, get more draft picks, or do we go with the safe pick and get Delpit? All right. Mm-hmm. So do, do I can go edge rusher. 
should I trade Tyron Smith right here and go with my offensive tackle and Andrew Thomas from Georgia? There's I have I have options, Joe, but I'm gonna be safe here. I'm gonna be safe, and I'm drafting Grant Delpit. All right, there we go. There we go. So in our sim- my simulation, I went with C.J. Henderson, the cornerback, Florida. And Mike went with Delpit, who was available in, in his draft as well. So he took him there. So I think both addressed the secondary. And uh, I, I feel good about those picks. You know, I, I think there's a lot to like about the upside for Delpit. Um, what, what do you think about, about those players, Mike? Hey, we talked about this. You got to go fix your back end. These guys help you do that. So if you're going defense and they're a high talent, they're rated high on the Dallas Cowboys draft board, go get that defense. We, we've been avoiding it for years. This, now, we get, now we're paying for it, and we got to invest. Allocate our draft picks to that side of the ball. There it is. All right, so now we got that pick. Cowboys Nations is going crazy. We're, we're declaring we're going to the Super Bowl. Fans are getting crazy. Now we're Uh-oh. going to the second round, all right? Day two. Day two. Day two. Let's see what, what, what comes up here. Simulation's about to run. Metabuke, defensive tackle. He's off the board. We are now on the clock, Mike. We got our. I got my cornerback in the first round. Second round. Let me take a look and see who's available. We still got Cole Komet tied in. Do we want to? Mm. Do we want to elevate, improve the tight end? He would be a name to consider. He's he's available here. Let me take a look at wide receivers. Ah, got some good ones available here. Pittman, Rager, Jalen Rager. Um. I think those would be it for I'm not I'm not so high on on uh, Uke, Arizona State you know they're trying to make some comparisons to uh, what's the guy that was there but I, I just don't see it um, let's look at safety okay here we go all right Th- we got some good safeties here I went cornerback do I go safety here Austin Davis is still available Kyle Duggar Antoine Winfield uh, Terrell Burgess, he's good too. So, I, I'm, I'm on the Winfield bandwagon. I guess you could say I, I like, I like how he plays. Um, you know, some, some will make issue with the size and that kind of thing, but I think McCarthy and looking at some of his draft history, he's not one of these guys who's gonna pigeonhole and 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 be so strict on measurements. Like, oh, our secondary guys have to be six foot plus or. You know, our, our edge guys need to be 6'5", like, you know, that kind of stuff. I think with right with McCarthy, there's going to be a little bit more leeway because he wants the best player. And if you're the best player and, and you don't, you know, fit the typical measurements, you know, you got to go with the better player. Defensive line, let me see who's out here. Jordan Elliott, defensive tackle out of Missouri. That's who I'm going to go with here in the second round. Ooh. I'm addressing the defensive tackle again, but this one here, a better better player than than Tristan Hill and Missouri they put out more better polished defensive linemen uh the same same as the as the Hawkeyes <clears throat> you know we talk about Iowa Hawkeyes Missouri these two programs their defensive linemen they always come out a little bit more polished than some other programs so that's my pick second round nice nice so I kind of want to double dip on defense, right? I just said my little hoorah speech about allocating my draft picks to the defense side of the ball. So, so far, what I got here, my top five guys, I got uh, Jonathan Taylor. I got I got two running backs. Uh, I got Swift from Georgia on here. I got Michael Pittman, USC. And I got uh, Isaiah Wilson, another offensive tackle from Georgia. Georgia is just popping out. Off the tackles like crazy, ain't they? But I'm looking at my quarter, my cornerbacks here. And there's a guy I really like from Clemson, Joe, and his name is AJ Terrell, six one, 190 pounds. Um, great cover guy, great cover guy, man, and in zone. So I got Grant Delpit on the first day. On the second day, I'm double dipping. 
on defense, and I'm going AJ Terrell. I like it. I do. I, I see Terrell is, is one of those guys that I like that I think. Um, you know, we'll see what we'll see what he does at the combine, but I think he's a name that more people are going to start to discuss. You know, obviously, everybody's talking about you know uh, Trayvon Diggs, uh, Fulton, Akuda. Oh, Trayvon Diggs from Alabama, though, dude, you yeah. can't go wrong with that one. And but then, like you said, like like we're talking about here, if Terrell's there, and and you know, you're you're really doing some you're doing some things here in the secondary now. Now we're cooking with grease. I, I like that pick. I like that pick, Mike. Uh, oh, my, my simulator was easy. I did all the same settings you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I I like it. I went with C.J. Henderson, cornerback, in the first. And then I went defensive line with Jordan Elliott. So I, I like those as well. You know, we address something in the secondary. We get some more beef in the front, in the middle, what we've been needing. Yeah, so I, I like that you were able to double dip and get – you know, your secondary bolstered up because some of these players are going to be leaving, you know. Um, yeah, e- even if we're talking about Anthony Brown or Byron Jones, but even after that, you know, are they going to be able to keep that secondary together with uh, Awuzie, Jordan Lewis, and Xavier Woods? So, right. know, I don't think they'll be able to keep all three of those guys when it's their, uh, their contract year. Let me ask you this, Joe. Would you be comfortable with getting – guys in free agency veteran corners or veteran linemen well i mean where where's your comfortability at so if the, let's say the cowboys went heavy in free agency on linemen you get, get some better some veteran presence who's knows a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two mm-hmm. or vice versa with the corners so where would you say okay cowboys i see what you're doing here for agency, get that experience on the line that can help out uh, Lawrence. Are you saying, okay, Cowboys don't get Byron. They get this veteran corner that might be able to help out Cheeto or Cheeto might be able to help out him. So where's your comfortability at right there? I would be more comfortable starting a veteran cornerback over mm-hmm. over a, uh, a veteran lineman, you know, because I think you can, you can get – it's hard to mess up. I mean, obviously there are busts that come out every year on the defensive line, but you know, for the most part, if you're going the first round, they're going to, you're, they're expected to produce, you know, and we're not, you know, I've gone over what the average is for a rookie, a defensive lineman, you know, it's between two and a half and five sacks at the max. So you're, uh, you, you can't expect too much. If, you know, let's say we go with Caleb on chase on, unless he goes, you know, above you know the average of what rookies do you know um he'll be he'll be a, a productive player but year two would be more when when he's gonna get going so cornerback i don't know i feel it's a uh, it's a little bit more uh it's tougher they're they're harder to find in free agency the ones that are that do become available in free agency are usually guys that uh, are gonna want a lot of money or older guys that have been cut but they have the name still um, mm-hmm. so I don't know, man, it's a, it'll be an interesting, you know, thing to see what, what the cow, the Cowboys attack it, you know, see how they do it. I think that's a great point. And I'm right there with you. Give me a veteran corner, um, you know, veteran, veteran lineman. I mean, you look at our veterans, right? I mean, Robert Quinn, I'll start with him. I mean, 11 and a half sacks. You can't go wrong with re-signing him. Then you look at guys like Malik Collins, um, you know, uh, Injury after injury, you know, the veteran that we're getting, what's his, his injuries like, um, you know, Tyron Crawford, same thing. Uh, you look at Kerry Hyder, uh, you know, same thing. He, he, had, he, he was a second round draft pick for the Detroit Lions and it just didn't pan out because of the injury. So corners, I'm more comfortable with that just because it's a little less wear and tear on their bodies. Yeah. That's but. true, man. Then the other thing too, that, 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 um, that I want to take into consideration too is, uh, you know, I, I do expect the Cowboys to go and sign some like mid to lower level cornerback. And, you know, fans are going to be like, man, who the heck, who is this guy? Why, why are we signing this guy? But to me, if you see a player like that, and I do expect the Cowboys to do that, it's more of an insurance policy. They're probably going to address it, address it in the, the draft. So, Kind of take a look and see, you know, that 
we always say it's a telltale sign, you know, what, what they do in free agency. If if they go out and get another, if they let Quinn go and then they bring in, I don't know, like somebody who's a lower tier guy again, you know, maybe he has a name, but not that good. They're going to address it in the draft. So the Cowboys, I think that's really kind of how I feel they've been doing free agency the last couple of years. They just bring in guys, right? Right. And then they really want to address they really want to address it in the draft. But we've kind of been seeing them kind of get bitten there a couple of times. You know, it didn't work out with Tristan Hill. Free agency didn't really pan out any anybody that could get their career resurrected under the magic of Marinelli. That was a little bit overrated. That was mm-hmm. not that just didn't happen. You know, he he really didn't develop any anybody here. Um, he and, and they didn't just because you know. They abandoned defense. Yeah, you know, yeah. year after year after year, they just abandoned defense, and it's it's crazy to me. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping, man, I'm I'm hoping that they get at least that second tier, that second wave of players. You know, you'll get the the legal tampering guys. That's the big buck guys, the legal tampering period. But then when you get that second wave, when free agency actually kicks off. Hmm. Who do they get? There's there's good players there, but the, you know they'll have to give up some money. But well, they uh, got the, the paydays they, are going to have to be paid. They might have to do it, man. They might have to do it this year because you know the the bargain bin stuff just hasn't been working out. You know. Yeah, and and I think Will McClay knows that. Stephen Jones, he obviously has to know that. Um, but I think it's just the way Jason Garrett ran things in Dallas. You know because. Uh, he carried a big stick, believe it or not, in that building. Hmm. And, you know, Mike McCarthy already said it's we decisions. So, you know, he, he that's new to him, having a lot of say-so on who to bring in, who to draft, et cetera. So, you know, I hope Mike McCarthy doesn't follow that path of bringing in third-tier, hell, even fourth-tier guys if that even exists. But on the Cowboys, fourth-tier, <laughs> yeah. it exists. Yeah. It really does, man. And – uh you know, and, and I'm still trying to get this Garrett mentality out of my head. Like when I'm when I'm look when I'm looking at players or free agents, like, oh, we wouldn't go after this guy. But no, we don't have Garrett anymore. We we can get this guy. Exactly. Like maybe a Danny Shelton does make sense now. You know, as a bigger guy, wouldn't there's no way in heck that they would do that with Marinelli here. But now it becomes a possibility. You know, you can get you a big space eater like that or. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot, man. There's a lot of quality defensive tackles in this free agency class. So, we'll yeah, and the, the, dude, I, it's exciting. You know, Jim Tom Sula knows what he's doing. Mike Nolan, you know, he he knows what he's doing when it comes to especially coaching linebackers, right? Um, just so many guys that on this defense side of the ball, it it's exciting, and uh, I can't wait to see who their type of guys are because it's going to, it's going to give you a big tail on a four, three or a three, four or a mixture of both. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it all starts next month, Joe. Right around the corner, everybody. So yeah, we, it's, it's a month away. Exactly. Yeah. Ain't that something. So, <laughs> and, and I mean, we're already through January. We're already through mid. I mean, this year already is going through, through at so at such a fast pace. It's crazy, man. It is. It'll be here before you know it. But thank you guys for listening to the Frisco Report, guys. Every Tuesday, we drop it like it's hot right here on Podbean, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Um, Joe, where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube. Just look me up, Cowboys Blog. Uh, follow me there. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, and hit me up on Twitter at Cowboys Blog Net. That's at Cowboys Blog Net. All right, guys. I really appreciate you guys. Guys, make sure you turn on his notification bell when you follow him on YouTube. Uh, he goes live unexpectedly. I mean, and it, it's great content. You don't want to miss it, especially live. Um, and uh, just make sure you turn on that notification bell when you follow Cowboys blog on YouTube. You can find me on Dallas Cowboy Football News on YouTube and on Facebook. DCF News 1 on Twitter, guys. And if you're ready to start a conversation, give me a mention. Give me a DM. Because that's where it starts, guys. Thank you. Another another one in the books, Joe. Y'all have a good night. Peace. Peace.